Hey everyone, it's Danny here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to install a 3-in-1 start capacitor overload and relay. If you guys don't know what it is, it looks like this. It's very easy to hook up. It takes about a couple minutes, and yeah, it can save you perhaps tons of money. In, our, in today's case, we are working on this compressor here, and I just got this in and there are no uh, components, electrical components for the compressor. So what I'm going to do is just install one of these. Um, there are wiring diagrams on these that you guys can use. It's very self-explanatory. I don't know if you guys can see. It just tells you where the uh, white goes, where the red goes, and the black wire. In this case, or in most cases, the the black goes on the it's common, which is usually the uh, the middle terminal. The model number of the compressor we are working on is right here. It's an Aspera uh, Aspera Hermetic compressor. So the black is in the middle, goes on the middle terminal. Then we have the white, and then the red. The white goes on the start terminal, the red goes on the run terminal, and the black goes on the common terminal. So make sure these are fully, those are fully in. And after that, you can go ahead and hook up these two black wires is for the power to your compressor. So you can either temporarily, just to see if the compressor works, just get a, a plug here, like this cord, hook it up, and then plug it in and see if the compressor works, just for temporary. So I'm going to do that to see if there is, you never know, since we get a lot of these compressors and they don't have electrical components, the compressor must be, could be shot, and the previous technician just scrapped the electrical components and just left the compressor as is for someone just to take to the scrap yard so it does happen so all I'm going to do is just temporarily just wire it up like so and just see if the compressor runs or not so after, I don't know if you guys can hear but the compressor is running and all I'm going to do is touch my high side See if there's any, uh, if the refrigerant is, if the pipe is hot. Right now it's a bit cold, but it is getting a bit hotter. And I remember the condenser fan's not running right now, so it should get pretty hot. Oh yeah, it's getting hotter. So yeah, there is definitely refrigerant in the system. And now I'm gonna unplug it. Now I'm going to wire everything up properly. So these two are for the power to my compressor. So now I'm going to get the two legs from my condenser fan and hook it up to these two wires here. Now depending on how much of a rush you are and how long the customer can wait, obviously the best way is to just get the original parts for the compressor, electrical components, but you guys, it's not always in stock. So this is a good temporary solution. I must emphasize that, that this is just temporary. This should never ever, these things should never ever be in your system for a long time. They're just temporary because after a while these do tend to uh, become faulty and then you would just have to replace it and it's definitely not a good thing. So yeah, always, always, always 
aim to just get the original components for the compressor. So once that's done, I'm gonna get some pliers and I don't know, I'm gonna show you guys. And this is coming down from the cabinet of the uh, two-door cooler that, I'm wor that we're working on right now. I'm gonna cut this and then connect this to these two wires that I just connected the condenser fan to. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like once it's all done and hooked up. Um, I wired my two black wires from the for the on the power side to, to the from three and one to my cabinet here, all done. And I put a cover on the compressor, as you can see here. Um, although it's not the right cover, it's always a good idea to put a cover on the electrical components, just because you are working with power and. It is just dangerous to have anything exposed. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that every time you're using these three in ones, make sure you're using the right horsepower, uh, the rated horsepower, uh, and the right voltage one. In this case, I don't know if you guys can see. Let me see if I can turn this. I don't think I can, but I'm working on a 110 volt half horse compressor, so therefore, I have a three in one half horse, um, three in one uh, half horse power 120 volt. Here I'll show you guys. I just screwed it in. I'll take it out and show you guys what where it says it. This is what I'm using. It's an RCO 210, half horse, 120 volt. Now that's supposed to match your com compressor. This compressor is also 120 volt, half horse. So both are matched and there we go. And now let's go back. And that's how you do it. That's how you install a three-in-one on a refrigeration unit.